So before we get started, are you an ethnic Kekistani? Have you ever desired Kekistani flags on your mugs or phone cases, pillows, duvets, goddamn steelback posters, t-shirts? My friend Black Cat has uh, solved your problem. On redbubble.com you can get all of this and more. And uh, I'll link in the description to the Redbubble site where you can order these products and to my friend Black Cat on his Minds channel, Black Cat Art. Check the description for more details. I want you to imagine two countries. In the first country, majority white. Uh, maybe 1% of the population is black people, and many of those black people are kept as slaves. In the second country, also majority white, maybe 10-12% to 12 of the population is black people. There are no slaves of any kind, and a black man has in fact been elected leader of this country for two straight terms a total of eight years. Is, does it, is it reasonable to assume one of these countries is in fact less racist than the other? <laughs> you got me. Yes, I am in fact speaking about the United States in two different periods of history. Now, if you answered no, one of these countries is not less racist than the other. I raise a goddamn eyebrow at you. At the end of the Civil War and the freeing of the slaves, I imagine many people, most, were racist. Not just white people, but black people and any other minorities at the time were very racist and uh, for different reasons but the racism was sort of the same like if a white person and a newly freed black person were walking down the street towards each other passing each other the white person would be thinking black people used to be slaves they probably hate all us white people is this white is this black person gonna say something maybe attack me god no but the black person is probably thinking, you know, we used to be slaves and maybe the white people hate us because they're bitter that we're not slaves anymore. Is this white person going to say something to me? Maybe attack me? Who God knows. So, for different reasons, they, many people probably felt the same thing. Now, in 63, all of these white congressmen and a white president wrote a bill for black people to have equal rights to white people. Uh, it was passed and signed by a white male president. So, did that just happen spontaneously? I doubt it. It seems that there must have been some sort of pressure being exerted on the white subculture between the freeing of the slaves and the civil rights movement of 63 uh, from both within the white subculture and without for the white subculture who was the majority and therefore in some sort of power to be not only less racist but not racist now obviously that kind of idea is not going to be accepted 100% by everybody all at once. So there would still be racist white people and racist black people and other minorities. But uh, to get these white male Congress people to do this and a white male president to sign off on it, <clears throat> the pressure must have built for some time, and between the end of slavery and the civil rights movement is close to 100 years. So that pressure must have built over time 
to a great degree. Now, that pressure seems to have continued, continued to build into my childhood. The first time I heard of the word racism, I was in the second grade, I think, and uh, I was being told that racism is bad. Now, our majority white classroom said, what the fuck is racism? And the teacher had to explain it to us. And we just accepted that it was bad and moved on. And second grade for me was already 25 years ago, maybe more. So that's quite a period of time where white people have been told, don't be racist. Now, considering that today, 150 years past slavery, 150 years of this pressure being built on the white subculture to not be racist, we seem to have a swath of people of color. I hate that term. I don't see how it's different from colored people. I don't know why anyone insists on this concept, but, you know, whatever. We have a swath, at least online, of POCs who insist that if you were if you're born white, you're racist. It seems to suggest that that pressure that's been exerted for 150 years on the white subculture to not be racist. That same anti-racist pressure has not been exerted on any other subculture, not only in the, in the United States of America, but in the West in general. Doesn't it stand to reason that the white subculture would in general be less racist than other subcultures? I don't know, I've called this critical racist theory. It's not a theory, it's a hypothesis. And uh, I would hope to have some sort of back and forth, maybe I'm talking at my ass. There's a comment section on YouTube and on Minds. Engage, let's do this. Because this is an idea that popped into my head a while ago. I haven't been able to get it out of my mind and uh, hopefully articulating it, putting it out there, people will engage and I'll be free of it and we can discuss it more plainly. Uh, Texanis, if you manage to make it this far. Black Hat Art, Black Hat Family. Redbubble.com, you can get yourself uh, teas, mugs, notebooks, basically anything you could ask for is on there. Uh, help out an indie artist, join Minds, and go fuck yourself, Jesus. Relevant links to shit I said in the description? Maybe. I'm Irving Twin. Like, subscribe, or don't. It's a free country. At least it used to be.